Hi, this is Maria Hocking, the UK Life Changer, here with episode six of the Happiness Hits, created to bring you hope and inspiration with a view to transformation. Now, today I am joined with happiness expert Anna Martin, who is a life coach who specialises in helping people unlock their potential and living authentically. So welcome, Anna. Thank you, Maria. Okay, it's really good to have you here. Um, and so today, Anna, we're just going to pick your brains about happiness and, um, you know, offer some tips and advice for the watchers or the viewers who may be watching this. So my first question for you is the question that I ask everybody on these happiness hits. And that is, what do you believe about happiness? Um, happiness is the thing that everyone strives for. And it's something that is sort of thrown around really freely. You know, people say, mm. well, I just want to be happy. But happiness means different things for different people. Yeah. But the grassroots of it, I feel, are um, living authentically in a way that you're not having to compromise yourself. Yeah. And it's that feeling when you go to bed at night where you feel content and you feel like you've done something good that day. Mm. You're you're happy to go to bed and put the day put the day to rest yeah absolutely absolutely and um what kind of feelings would you associate with happiness because happiness is such a broad word like you say isn't it we throw it around very freely but what type of emotions do you feel within where you personally feel happy if that makes sense um there's element of excitement yeah um of feeling sort of excited about the future yeah. happiness doesn't have to be just about what you're doing right now but okay. that excitement and that anticipation for the future whether that's in an hour's time or tomorrow next week next month yeah. or longer term yeah but it's that feeling of of wanting to keep on going yeah yeah um, and the emotions associated with that as I said excitement joy yeah fulfillment yeah Absolutely. And I think they would be my top three, excitement, joy, fulfillment, you know, and I think we all know what it feels like to be happy, don't we? Yeah. And um, but sometimes we find ourselves in places where we're, we're kind of lacking the happiness and we feel a bit lost and we wonder how we can get it back. And we look at other people wondering why they're so happy and we're not. And um, yeah. I know that you've been through your own personal challenges in life. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I love to learn from other people who have been through challenges and, and kind of risen from them. So would you like to share with us, you know, maybe a one or two of the challenges that you've been through? Feel free to share what you like. Yeah, um, I will tell you about the more recent ones yeah. um I think like most people in life you know there's you know adversity and challenges peppered throughout mm. um but um I've been registered disabled for about three years yeah. um and I was using a wheelchair almost full time mm. um and I've managed to regain a lot of my mobility now um so my disability and my whole sense of identity wrapped up around that was, um, yeah, yeah. you know, definitely wasn't a happy time. No. Um, huge challenges there. Um, and also six months ago, myself and my husband separated and I actually came out as gay. Okay. And as you can imagine, that's, you know, that's been a huge challenge again to accept myself for who I am. Yeah. Um, and starting again from scratch, um, you know everything that goes with sort of separation and divorce and then everything yeah. that goes with with coming out and I have teenage children as well so right you know, there's a whole lot going on there yeah um so challenging definitely <laughs> yes I can imagine, I can imagine. <laughs> so would you say I mean you know that you, there are so many challenges within that aren't there but um what do you what was it that inspired you to sort of come out if that makes sense um after all this time I mean what was it that was it the living authentically thing for you was it different from that it was definitely the living authentically yeah um I mean I didn't I didn't even realize that I was gay um I always thought that I was bisexual and yeah. so sort of you know being married to my husband it you know it wasn't an issue mm. and as time went on sort of I became more and more unhappy yeah didn't really know who I was um so when we split up and then I kind of realized that actually I really wasn't interested in dating men again 
yeah it kind of dawned on me and then everything kind of yeah. fell into place sort of I realized how much I'd been squashing myself wow yeah um and yeah I decided to come out to everyone just because I'm the sort of person who I mean I'm, an, I'm a very open book yeah and I don't like feeling like I'm being penned in right and for me it was about being able to live authentically, be completely me without looking over my shoulder, without worrying yeah, yeah. about what people are saying or thinking, mm. without without the burden of feeling like I was lying to people or being dishonest. Right, okay. okay. Um, and coming out is a very personal choice. Um, yeah. For many people, they just can't, whether it's, you know, it's just not safe for them to do so, or, um, you know, they've got other things going on in their lives that are pre- preventing them. Yeah, But for me, I wanted a whole clean slate. I wanted to start mm. again. I knew I had to start again. And I knew yeah. that this was going to be tough. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, living authentically was right up there. Yeah. I, I, you know, at 35 years old, I'd already spent so long hiding from myself. Wow. that I decided that enough was enough. Yeah. I'm going to be 100 percent me. Um, and whilst it's been difficult at times, mm. I haven't looked back. Wow. And I love that phrase you use there, hiding from myself. Uh, you know, I was going to steal that one. <laughs> Not that I'm hiding from myself, but, you know, <laughs> we're doing some great now. But, <laughs> but, you know, the hiding from ourselves. And I think there are so many people out there, aren't there, that are hiding from themselves without even actually realising it. And yeah. I think we're, we're so conditioned sometimes to go through life, to be a certain way, to do a certain job, to work nine to five, to follow a certain path. And at that time, we don't actually realise that we're being conditioned or suppressed, do we? Yeah. You know, and, and I think, you know, I mean, I've been through it, that I've been through times like that where I've been, yeah, hiding from myself, not really living as I truly was, if that makes sense, just like you said. And, and what does it feel like? I mean, how would you, if someone's watching this right now and they're kind of thinking, hmm, that sounds familiar, hiding from myself, how do you know when you're hiding from yourself, if that makes sense? Is, do you get feelings? Do you just know or what's your opinion on that oh what a big question um (laughs) (laughs) um I think it's for me it was definitely a sense of not feeling fulfilled I felt like that there was always something missing or not quite sitting Mm. right right and I think that I always had that feeling of you know oh but what if you know it could be about anything but you know what if I was doing this or what if that wasn't happening? Yeah. And it was, I always just thought, you know, oh, you know, stop it, Annie. You're just sort of thinking the grass is greener on the other side and, you know, be happy with what you've got, you know, you've not got it bad, you know, you've got, you know, a fairly nice life, amazing children. Yeah. Um, But yeah, just constantly squashing who I was, what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I found that I was very much sort of living for other people. And I think as a mum, we do that a lot anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it kind of gone deeper than that. You know, my children are older now, they're teenagers. And that had given me more time for myself to think about what my next steps in life were now that I wasn't mum to tiny children anymore. Yeah. And yeah, just I noticed so much that, you know, there were things that I wanted to do. But yeah. there was always something holding me back. Yeah. And I don't just mean in terms of relationships, mm. but everyday things and sort of the whole disability thing, yeah. you know, prevented so much. But I think because I was hiding from myself, because I was sort of yeah. scared of who I really was, I was letting that become a bigger part of me. Yes. Right. Okay. And, you know, things like wanting to be more independent, wanting to mm. be able to drive further afield rather than being such an anxious driver as I am yeah um, you know I'd have these grand plans of oh I could do this or this and then I'd sort of shrink back into my shell yeah yeah and yeah that that was a big sort of sign for me that you know yeah. this wasn't me you know growing up I was always very out there very yeah. loud and opinionated yeah yeah um, not afraid to live outside the box and be the black sheep right and I had found that more recently I had started to sort of conform I suppose in a way yeah and 
I mean, so so many women that I've spoken to who have come out later on in life, especially after being married to a man, have said similar that it's you know that um, like compulsory he- compulsory heteronormativity. Right. Where okay. We are sort of conditioned. Yeah. To think well, you know, when we grow up, we'll sort of you know find a nice man, settle down, have yeah. children. Yeah. And as much as I think a lot of us try to push against that and sort of say, no, 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 you know, I'm going to do things my own way. Yeah. We tend to fall into it anyway without even noticing. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, yeah. So when I decided to come out, that's that Mm. was another thing that made me think, do you know what? No, I've never been one to shy away from Mm. being true to myself, even if it makes other people uncomfortable, even if it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Go and do it. (laughs) Yeah. And and I think, you know, what you've been through is incredible, you know, and how you've come out the other side. And and I think, you know, the key is if someone's listening to this right now, if you're feeling that you're hiding from yourself, you will kind of know deep down that you're hiding from yourself eventually, if that makes sense. Or, you know, but maybe this will inspire you listening to this today. Um, But I know that when I was hiding from myself, I wasn't even aware of it to start with. Um, You know, I was just living as I thought I should be living rather than doing that I really what I really want to be doing and I think for me it was a gradual process of a realization that I'd been so conditioned by other people's opinions and expectations over the years and then when suddenly I realized I had all these choices it was like this bliss and freedom like I'd never experienced you know and yeah. and I guess what you're saying is very similar to, similar to that really you know when you, when you live authentically a lot of stuff changes doesn't it it really yeah. does and um I think you know a lot of happiness follows as a result um, and, and what I'd like to touch on with you, actually, is, you know, is, you know, we talk about being conditioned and suppressing ourselves and kind of like living in a box. And I truly believe that um, a lot of this comes down to what we believe, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, we have these beliefs or stories that we tell ourselves that we have to do this. We have to live like this. Um, we can't get the job of our dreams because we have to have a sensible job doing working nine to five, that kind of thing. You know, and yeah. I know that when we change our story or our belief we can change our life yeah um so my question to you is yeah what do you, what is your view on beliefs tell me a little bit about what you think um about. I very much believe that what you put out there into yeah. you know the universe the wide world is yeah. is what you get yeah um as the saying goes your vibe attracts your tribe yes yeah I love that you know, <laughs> if you're if what you're really wanting, for example, is to start a whole new career that mm. goes against the grain of what you've always done, um, you know, set that intention rather than yeah. just, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, make that mm. commitment to yeah. I'm going to do it. You don't yes. have to have all the answers and know how to do it yet. You just right. have that commitment that you're going to do it. Yeah. And once you've got that, you know, that's when you start making plans, breaking things down into small manageable mm. goals um and you find that once you've made that commitment you start altering your behavior and the way that you do things the people that you talk to and that in itself you know you've altered that to attract what you need in order to help you fulfill that dream yeah and that's so powerful you know people are very quick to write off what they want because either oh it's not the right time or Mm. you know they you know they can't give up their current job because of finances or mm-hmm. you know there's a whole myriad of, of yeah. reasons but then you have to ask yourself well you know later on down the line when I'm sort of you know gray and old and you know mm-hmm. retired with my feet up am I going to be satisfied with knowing well at least you know I just kept doing what I was meant to do yeah or do you want to be able to say do you know what I took a massive leap of faith yeah. but I made it work Yes. And the thing with leap of faiths are they might not work as you expected, Mm. but they always work in one way or another. So even if you don't get the end goal that you envisaged, Mm. it can lead on to something amazing. Yeah. Or it's going to teach you valuable lessons that then you can use elsewhere. Yeah. But either way, you know, if you don't try, you'll never know and you'll always have that bit of regret. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's great advice there and great thoughts. And um, I'd like to go back to something you said at the beginning there. And I think you said something like, um, you know, you just have to start to believe or or say, I'm going to do this. And there's a big difference, isn't there? Because if you think it's not possible, then you're not going to take any action. You're not going to change your behavior. If you 
act as if it's possible for you, you're going to start to behave very differently and get very different results, you know. Yeah. And something else that you said that I really liked there was that actually, you know, we don't have to know the whole journey, do we? We might have this dream or this goal. And I know that, and I know that you've experienced this working with clients as well, that often people can become overwhelmed if they've got this dream way out in the distance. It just seems like so much to achieve and they haven't got a clue exactly how to make it happen. But sometimes all you've got to do is just take that first step, isn't it? You know, and, you know, so if you want to change a job, maybe it's just investigating new jobs. Maybe if you want to make a new connection, maybe it's just sending an email. But, you know, I believe that in one second we can change our life with one bit of action, if that makes sense, which then opens up the doors, like you're saying, for many other opportunities. Yeah. And um, and, and I think it's really important to be aware that what we believe may not be true, you know. Yes. And, and going back to your story, actually, you were saying that you believe you kind of had to live in a certain way and you settle down and you meet a man, that kind of thing. And and that, you know, where did that belief come from for you personally? You know, it's was, was it just over the years? Is it what you who you were surrounded by, you know, or is it just like what society expects? What do you think? Yeah, it's de- definitely the so- sort of societal concept of yeah. normal. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had a very sort of normal upbringing. Um, yeah. You know, mum and dad still together, have a sister. Yeah. Um, and whilst even growing up as a young teenager, I had lots of gay friends. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that concept was never alien to me. Mm. But I think I had this kind of inbuilt belief that that's that's not for me that's not Mm. not that that's not what I wanted but that that wasn't the life that had been kind of mapped out for me yeah Yeah. what I mean by that isn't that my parents had mapped anything out because they had always been very very supportive of you know you do what you want to do yeah you know don't worry about other people but yeah it's a societal thing I think because Mm -hmm. I think because I was you know I was hard working at school I got good grades I was a good kid and I think that's just sort of the expected thing you know yeah you know good good kids you know doing what she's meant to do she'll go on to have a lovely husband and children and yeah and even just the images and things that we're surrounded by in media in tv and radio you know disney you know yes yeah you know it's all you know the the girl and boy meet and they live happily ever after yeah yeah and that's where sort of representation is really important but that's yeah another story for another day (laughs) yeah (laughs) but you know like you're saying we're, we're just surrounded by this stuff aren't we so we believe we have to live in a certain way and um and i think that when we realize that we're living as a result of the stories that we've constructed in our head based on what we've been surrounded by. um, I think the the first step is to acknowledge that we might be believing something that might be limiting us, if that makes sense, you know? And um, and I think, you know, until I started training as a coach, I didn't even question my beliefs. I didn't even question what was possible. I was just living life as I thought I should be living, you know? Um, But there's a really great way, I think, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, that, you know, if there's something in your life that you haven't got, there's probably something you're telling yourself about why you can't have that. And that's kind of the belief that you can identify, you know, say maybe if there's someone watching this right now that wants to change their job, for example, are you telling yourself you can't have it because you're supposed to be in a sensible job? You know, are you telling yourself that you can't have that dream because you've got to look after your wife and family and that's the end, you know, but what if you could look after your wife and your family or your husband and your family and have the job of your dreams? Because it's totally possible, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even with the disability side, Yeah. I mean, It's quite a controversial one because obviously I understand that, you know, physical health is physical health. And, you know, if there's things your body can't do, then, you know, Mm. then it can't do it. But for myself, I think once I came out and was single and realised I had to suddenly be very strong, I had to get independent. Yeah. I think that mixed with sort of the emotional offload yes has really spurred me on but also you know there's so much I want to do with life I used to go hiking I used to be very active going to the gym weightlifting yeah and I want to be active again you know I live you know surrounded by loads of beaches and beautiful natural sort of landscape and I want to get out there and enjoy it and so 
it was difficult sort of you know on one hand I was like right I'm going to beat this disability I'm going to get out of my wheelchair I'm going to regain my mobility yeah and I had a lot of people who meant very well and would Mm -hmm. say you know don't set yourself up for a fool you know there's only so much you can do and yeah you know you have to accept it right I've spent nearly three years trying to accept it and if you know it's probably the hardest part of my life is trying to accept that I was no longer very mobile I was relying on other people yeah and whilst you know I do a lot to try and advocate for disabled people and acceptance Mm. from society yeah there was something that niggling thing in me that you know I have to at least try yes okay once you become disabled I think society just expects you to basically just sort of sit down and die right okay yeah you know, yeah yeah just sit in a chair be happy with what yeah. you've got sort of yeah with being placated with they're there you know yeah yeah be a good girl and you know watch tv yeah I, you know I wanted I wanted more than that and I wanted to wow. at least try to get yes. that and whilst I'm still a long way off you know mm. hiking and stuff I've made a huge huge strides <laughs> yeah Excuse the pun. <laughs> um, yeah. Huge strides, you know, improving my health and my mobility. Yeah. And that has also shown me that, you know, the power of the mind and mm. belief. Yeah. Is so so strong. Yes. And whilst I mean, if you know, if I had a paralysis, obviously, you know, no yeah. amount of positive thinking is going to yeah. yeah going to change that. But you know, I I started small. I didn't have huge goals I started small with you know I'd like to be able to just you know walk to the end of the path on on my road yeah you know if I could just walk to the car with my sticks rather than needing a wheelchair yeah just tiny little goals and I just just kept at it just keep believing that you know yes. even if I'm having a bad day where pain's bad and I can't really move mm. much that's fine it doesn't mean that oh no you know I'm never getting better you know it's not working just yeah. means it's a bad day just like yeah. sometimes we wake up with a headache and it's you know the yeah. day or the morning is going to be a bit blurry yeah but um but yeah that's so inspiring isn't it because what you're saying here is that when you changed your mindset you've literally increased your health is that right is absolutely 100 percent. yeah and how powerful is that for anybody watching this right now who you believe it's not possible you know actually out of here is walking talking through but you know when you get the right mindset you can yeah do amazing things and yeah I mean yeah and how does it feel Anna to to have made that progress and I, I know you're still progressing but yeah. how does it um, feel it's mind-blowing I mean yeah. if, if someone had said to me sort of eight months ago say that if I changed my mindset that I'd be able to walk a bit yeah I'd have probably wanted to bury them <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know because I mean disabled and ill people get told all the time that oh you know have you tried yoga have you tried clean eating have you tried this and this and this yeah. and it's soul destroying when you just want someone to accept you for who you are and see you yeah. Yeah. and people are trying to tell you that you know it makes it feel like it's your own fault and you're not trying hard yeah. enough yeah but there's a lot of merit in in there there's so much merit in there that yeah and do you mind telling us what causes your disability you know or and what what condition do you have so I have a genetic disorder called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome yeah and that means that my body makes faulty connective tissue which Mm. means my body is prone to dislocating yeah and my worst area is around my pelvis Mm. um which makes sort of walking very difficult you know my pelvis pops out of place several times a day yeah um so you know it's a weakness my connective tissue doesn't hold and no amount of positive thinking is going to strengthen my connective tissue no however the positive thinking and the you know absolute sheer determination Mm. has enabled me to you know stick with physio plans you know and my physio plans are you know they're not you know I'm not working out all the time they're tiny they're yeah. really, really tiny little movements and muscle control yeah but it's allowed me to be really hell-bent on that rather than thinking oh well you know a couple of weeks later this hasn't worked yeah you know okay. I've just absolutely stuck to it yeah um and also I think because I've changed my mindset mm. and I'm so much happier in myself yeah that has allowed you know the bad sort of mornings or whatever 
you know, they don't control me now. I don't sort right. of get into that sort of funk of, you know, oh, you know, I'm disabled. I can't do this. I can't do that. I sort of say, okay, so, you know, I'm sore this morning. I'm going to really pace myself. I'm going to be gentle yeah. with myself. And even identifying things that make me feel better, like, you know, a hot bath or, you know, a favourite film, you know, something yeah. for me to, you know, let myself rest. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and just understanding myself better and knowing that, yeah. you know, this isn't what's going to be like all the time. I mean, mm. you know, I'm always going to be registered disabled. I'm always going to have ehlers danlos Syndrome. Yeah. But there are things I can do to put a positive spin on it. Yeah. And I think what you're talking about here, and I know we've talked about this in the past, is kind of locus of control, where we believe our control to be. And I know that people can either have an external locus of control where they believe that they are, um, they have no influence over the outcome of what happens to them, or people have an internal locus of control where they believe that no matter what happens to them, they still can influence the outcome. Yes. So what I'm hearing here is you've kind of moved from an external locus of control to realizing that you can't change your condition, but you can change you. Yes. And that has had massive positive benefits for you, your happiness and your health. Is that right? Yeah, that's spot on. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of, I mean, whilst I was trying to sort of get to grips with being disabled and sort of limitations, yeah. I held a lot of anger Yeah. Um, and I'm generally not an angry person. Mm. And I certainly, you know, I'm not the sort of angry person where I'll scream and shout at people, no. but you know, I hated myself. Yeah. Um, I blame myself for everything, you know, I harbored so much guilt or, yes. you know, because of my family and people yeah. that, you know, I needed to rely on. Yeah. And you know, there was definitely that element of woe is me, this is so unfair, why is it happening yeah. to me? There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. And yeah, I basically had to give myself a kick up the backsides and yeah. you know, really pull my socks up and say, right, yeah, you know, I've got I've got two choices now. Yeah. You know, I either stay as I am, I'll have to sort of, you know, get social services to give me a carer to come in and help me. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna, you know, my life's gonna consist of me looking out the window and watching everybody else live mm, yeah or I'm gonna give it my absolute best I'm gonna be mm. you know even you know give it two years of just yeah. not giving up and just keep on going yeah see, even if I have just a small change that would be amazing yeah and actually in six months although you know a couple of months ago I was thinking you know, this is taking ages you know such a long time yeah. huge amount of effort for such small changes yeah um, but now when I sort of really look back and I realize how big those changes are, yeah. but more importantly, the changes in my state of mind and how I feel, right. Which is so much bigger than, you know, being able to walk to the end of my road. Yeah. You know, I just feel I've now got that hope for the future. Wow. Because, that's amazing. You know, before it was like, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to plan any holidays because mm. it's so hard to plan a holiday around sort of wheelchair access. And, yeah. You know, I, I think what you're saying is just so inspirational. I can see why you're a life coach. You know, every single thing that you're saying, it can be, I don't know, that the strategies that you've applied to move forwards can be applied to pretty much anybody in any situation. You know, when you said you were taking like tiny steps forward, literally physically taking tiny yeah. steps. You know, we, we can do that in life. If we want to make a change, we just got to take those tiny steps and we've got to keep being determined and we've got to believe we can do it. And we've got to keep, stay in touch with that end goal. And, you know, maybe you don't know when you can do a certain thing or when you'll be able to walk further, but you know, you're just going to keep on going. And yeah. I think that's, that's really important. So if anybody's watching this right now and you want to change your life, this is the woman because <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. Okay, I've so. been there and done that. And, you know, yeah. I will continue to, you know, throughout life, there's going to be challenges. Yes. You know, there's, things that I can't possibly you know foresee happening that you know will happen yeah and I think dealing with these kind of adversities has taught me so much and although you know it's been really hard you know sort of being disabled and trying to trying to get through that sort of the end of my marriage and coming out yeah you know really really tough times yeah but it's shown me that actually if I could get through all of that yes <laughs> then you know and as you said it can be applied to everything I mean yeah. it's like you know it may be a bit cliche but a bit like training for a marathon yeah you decide you're going to do a marathon and never run a step mm -hmm. in your life but then you break it down what would you need to do to start training for a marathon 
where you yeah. might decide to start eating a little bit more healthily then yeah. you might start you know doing you know five minute runs and yeah. you know these tiny things all add up yeah and especially when you then take a moment to take stock and look to see how far you've come mm. it's yeah it's mind-blowing yeah. to realize how powerful you are and wow. believe me I felt I felt yeah. so weak and vulnerable I felt pathetic yeah um you know all the things that people should not feel about themselves but I did mm. yeah and yeah now I feel like I you know bring it on I could take on anything yeah. I've already got through so much yeah that, but... that's amazing you know you, you almost bring me to tears here I'm sort of trying to hold it together because <laughs> it's so inspiring and this story is really touching me you know seriously it's just like honestly I have got tears in my eyes now that's it's gone, gone but it is so inspiring to hear you talk like this it really is you know and and what I would kind of like to talk about before we finish is you know because you chose a different life didn't you you yes. chose to step out and be brave and go through all of those challenges to live authentically but I know that what keeps us stuck sometimes is fear. So, yeah. I mean, were you afraid of coming out? Were you afraid of changing your whole life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's an understatement. Yes, I was terrified. Yeah. Um, I think the scariest bit was coming out to myself. Yeah. Wow. Right. Um, just because once I had really admitted it to myself, there was no going back. Mm. And I knew that it would have to be dealt with. And then I came out to my family. Well, first of all, I came out to my ex-husband. Yeah. Um, you know, we were still on really good terms at that point. Um, and I think it helped to validate his feelings as well. You know, he knew that something wasn't right. Right. So that was pretty scary. But then, you know, actually coming out to everybody. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what sort of backlash I might get. Right. I didn't know what sort of judgment... Um, I know a lot of people because you know I was quite private about our split and you know reasons yeah. for the split which I won't go into but everybody sort of assumed it was because I'm gay and that wasn't right. that wasn't the that wasn't the thing I mean obviously that's played a massive part in it yeah but I've had a lot a lot of judgment um and yeah. you know a lot of tittering and disappointment disapproval yeah yeah and I knew that that was a very likely thing to happen but fear or not I could either go through life being scared yeah and hiding and to me that just seemed such a waste I mean yeah. it's such a cliche of you know life is short and we only get one shot but it's so true yeah you know yeah. Did, you know trying to think about you know when I'm at the end of this life you know mm. when I look back do I want to look back and think oh well at least you know at least I didn't you know do anything to upset people and cause anyone yeah. to say anything mean to me right or did I want to sort of say do you know I stood my ground yeah I lived my life the way I wanted to albeit yeah. late yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know better late than never and yeah. even if tomorrow was my last day on this earth then at least I know that Mm. I got there in the end yeah yeah and I think you know that, that's yes yeah, again so inspirational and like the fear was there and you didn't wait for the fear to go before you made the change you just pushed through the fear and I think that's a mistake we often make in life is to wait for the right time to wait so until we're not so as, a, uh, as afraid if that makes sense yeah. but we all know that everything we want is on the other side of fear you know yeah. And when we step through that and we push through that, we can have the life that we really truly want. And um, and I think what you're saying there, if I'm if I'm correct in this, is that what kind of sort of helped you through that fear was to realise that you could spend the rest of your life hiding, um, you know, which wouldn't be very pleasant at all, would it? And you'd probably have a lot of regrets at the end of your life, or you could choose to really live life, and that's what you chose, you know. So, uh, and do you think that was your main driver for stepping through that fear, or was there something different? Um, I just wanted to be happy yeah I just wanted to feel like I wasn't wasting my life you know like I said yeah. sort of like watching life go past the window I mean that was sort of literally and sort of metaphorically yes um you know I wanted to be in control of my own life and yeah. you know and especially with social media as well you know you see everyone mm -hmm. having a great time and people only put on social media what they want you to see. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you very rarely see the tough times and you see everyone having this, you know, fantastic life that you want. Yeah. Um, 
you know I I wanted that for myself I didn't yeah I didn't want to be sort of wrapped up in sadness and regret and yeah. and stuff like that but yeah I had to push through the fear it was a case of well I'm already absolutely terrified yeah, <laughs> yeah. um things are already pretty bad yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was yeah I'm just going to take that final leap and yeah. you know never mind what other people think you know it's my life yeah um, you know, I had comments about, you know, how are the children going to take it? You know, what if yeah. they get teased? And but, you know, I wasn't going to live, hide, you know, hiding in the shadows to, mm. you know, to. Yeah, it's difficult to say. I say to protect my children. Obviously, I would, you know, I yeah. would do and whatever it took to protect my children. I understand. But I knew if I was having to be really strong for me. Yeah, that means being strong for them as well, and also teaching them that yeah. no matter how, how hard it is, how scary things are, mm. you have to live for yourself. You have to live authentically. Yeah. Otherwise, and I think that's a, I think that's the biggest lesson any parent can teach their children, yeah. isn't it? And you know, and we worry so much about, about getting the best grades and they're doing well at school and things, but actually, I think it's a better skill to be able to live authentically. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think sometimes as parents, if we realise we're not living authentically, <laughs> yeah. then our children are watching and they're learning from that, you know, and they're, they're thinking they have to live in a certain way. But what you've done there, even though it was really difficult for you, you have given your children the knowledge that, you know, your teenagers the knowledge that actually everybody should live authentically. And yeah. we can all step through that fear and we can all step, stop hiding from ourselves, as you say, and step into who we really are. Yeah, um, which is very, very powerful. So if there was somebody watching this right now, Anna, who was really resonating with what you're saying here right now and going, wow, I'm feeling like I'm hiding from myself. What advice would you give them? What would you say to them right now? Uh, be honest with yourself before yeah. anything else. Be honest with yourself. Um, I mean, depending on, you know, what the situation is, for example, if it was a case of coming out, yeah. um, it's not for everyone it's not as simple as just coming out you know no. there's you know there's still a lot of danger for many people in many parts you know of the world and even in the UK yeah but generally speaking I mean most problems or not problems but most situations it isn't a case of you know life or death no so in that case be honest with yourself ask yeah. yourself you know how you know if you could design your life you know your best life how would it look you know what yeah. would you you know if there was no worry about repercussions or people's judgment or anything all the you know mm -hmm. the little bad things the catastrophizing that we all do yeah yeah um you know how would your best life look yes and once you've thought that go and get it yeah wow I mean, <laughs> yeah just go I mean, get it's that simple you know it's not yeah you know the actual doing it isn't easy you know there's going to be fallout there's going to be tough yeah. times but you break it down into the tiniest of steps you concentrate yeah. on one at a time yeah and before you know it you know six months a year as possible look back and go wow do you know what yeah. I've done it yeah and that's amazing and I think you know what you're saying there is as well I think you mentioned something along those lines that you know when, when we sort of take action and we go get it we're going to get obstacles we're going to get challenges that come along and if we expect to achieve our dreams and our dream life without obstacles then we are living in a dream world you know, because yeah. stuff happens doesn't it but it doesn't mean that those obstacles those challenges have to stop you it means that we have to find a way around them yeah. so that was really really amazing advice Anna and um you know I've absolutely loved this episode I really have you are so inspiring and I can like I say I can see why you're a coach and see how you change so many people's lives because you're like a walking talking metaphor you know <laughs> and everything that you share and teach people so if people want to connect with you if they want to message you or want to work with you um what's the best way to find you uh my website is okay. um annavmartin.co.uk okay um okay. i do have social media accounts as well you'll find all the the, yeah, the links. links to those yeah. on the website yeah um so yeah, e yeah. Awesome. On the website's got my email address, telephone number, social media links. Yeah, I'm brilliant. always happy to talk to people. Sort of no obligation whatsoever. You know, I love to connect yeah. with people. Yeah, love to share stories. Um, and on my website, you know, website's a permanent work in progress. You know, yeah. there's things on there to help people. Yeah. Um, you know, That's amazing. utilize so. it. 
So brilliant. So if you're interested in working with Anna, if you want to talk to Anna or just connect or have a conversation, um, I will put the link in the video in the video description below. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Anna, for your time. It's been wonderful. It's been incredible and it's been inspirational. And um, yes, I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, Maria. OK, then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.